Hey, <clears throat> okay, Dawn here again. Um, I got finished with my scan. Actually, I had my, both of the scans of the laptop here. And I uh, did have the desktop up on the screen, but I finished it. And I, I was going to make a video of the results, and I forgot. But uh, I'll make that big enough where we can see the rest of that screen. One thing came up. Uh, it said, uh, could not be got taken, uh, pulling threats were found during the computer scan and could not be cleaned automatically. Select the desired action to be formed with the files. Multiple files can be selected and action can be taken from the right click menu. More information, cleaning threats. Please vis visit ESET knowledge. Okay, so this is in, uh, media location, uh, Program files, Kegelock Coded Pack, Filters, MAD, VR, MAD, HCTRL, probably unknown new your PE virus, probably, huh? Your, like heuristics, I guess. As it says, no action, well, it said it couldn't do it. Okay, so you can click on there and select delete. But since the machine's not running good, it seems like one of those coded packs came up showing infected one time before. I thought k -like coded pack was the good one. There's two of them that I've used. So I'm going to tell it to delete it. Oops. I was putting my elbow down on this chair arm so I could try to hold still. Okay, finish. Alright, now what? Took an hour and 44 minutes. It says it felt like it took forever. Show scan. Well, it's 5:37 in the morning, according to that. Yeah, it's right too. Okay, so I don't know if it's going to delete it or what. Let's show the scan log. Scan this. How can that be extracted? That's all that Sardu stuff again. I just don't like Sardu. It does have a lot of ads in it now and stuff, and it doesn't work as well as it used to. It's more limited than it used to not be limited, really. Now it's limited. They're trying to. You can't cut, and I, I mean, well, I don't know what's the answer to that. You know, the guys don't. Every, people can't just work for free forever. They, but uh, I don't. Being pushy doesn't seem. I don't think that makes them any more money. I don't know. Nagging and you know nag screens and all that stuff. And I certainly don't. If software doesn't work well and it, they say, oh, this would be great if you'd pay for it. Well, if it's sucky already, then why would I pay for it? So. I don't know. The software thing is a hard one to figure out. Quarantine cash. Quarantine cash. Protected. Okay, it's in Spybot. I thought I uninstalled Spybot. Stuff still left behind. Spybot has got to where it's one of those that's. Um, doesn't it? You can't make it stop running in the background, no matter what you do, and it uses too much resources. Now it used to be light on the resources. Some kind of temp file, but it says it's okay. That's a long list. So I think this is another one that, yeah, and then it says K-Lite Proto Pack, probably. Says, okay, it says it's deleted, so that's what I wanted to make sure. It didn't say whether it deleted it or not. And there's all the other. I'm really not quite sure. Filter. Let's see. Diagnostic records, information, warnings, errors, and critical warnings. Let's see what we got. Oh, we still got a bunch. OK, 
Okay. I'm reading, <clears throat> not holding the phone. Okay. Errors, critical warning. Let's go with critical warning. Okay, there's no critical warning. Well, that was kind of hard to tell what the what, isn't it? Okay, we'll go with just errors. Lots of errors. Okay. Yeah, okay. So all those ones that are blue. Well, a lot of that stuff, for anything to do with spyware, uh, I mean, spybot, I, I thought it was already gone because I used Revo and install it, uninstall it. Formative record, what is that I just filtered by? Warnings. And that's the one that I went ahead and told it to delete. Okay. So what else? Informative records. Okay. Um, NIS inject helper is okay. Rex found one. Just the only one that seems to be they think it was a virus is the one I deleted. Probably an unknown virus. Which it could be. Something wrong with this system. Alright, so. I'm going to just go with that. Close that. Now. You don't. Really, I'm going to reboot. You don't really have to shut that. Because on a lot of system it all goes away. It's a pretty cool little system. You, if you needed to use TeamViewer, you could use it. A few other things you could use. Um. TeamViewer is a remote desktop if you don't already know what that is. Client and server. Um, let's see. File managers and the leaf pad, uh, text file editor, Chrome web browser. That's actually Chromium, the real Chrome. The what Chrome's built on Gpart. It could be quite useful. I think I used it in here the last time. To partition manager. And um, let's see what my partitions look like. I mean, I know I'm sure they're fine, but yeah, there's the FAT32 1.81. Oh, that's my USB stick. That's my USB stick. Okay, so here it is FAT32 19.53 gigabytes. That's my where I install from and I back up. I use it as a backup and. Uh, didn't need all that space from install files, but I wanted a little backup space. And then nowadays with Windows 7, you got to have, uh, where is it? Oh, no, you don't. Well, I did when I put it on the desktop. But I install, I guess because I used that FAT32 at the beginning, you had to have, there's certain system files that are on that FAT32. And then, so I got 39.67 gigabyte, and I've only got like 5 gig left. I think I, I cleaned it up some yesterday, and I've got it up to about 6. I fill everything up. Okay, then that's my ext4 for my boot sector of my Linux Fedora 21 system. And it makes an extended partition, an LVM for your system. That's a, probably the same partition. Uh, 52 gigabytes. And it doesn't have but about 6 gigabyte left on it either. So that's my system. Now, click on logout. Some say logout, some say shut down. They all say something different. So, let's reboot it again. I like my big screen and my big keyboard. I can't stand typing on, uh, I'm so used to my keyboard, I can't stand typing on, uh, I don't type well on uh, laptop keyboards and I don't like to, I can't hardly really use those touch pads either. Okay, now I'm going to do a Cronus. Start a Cronus, it doesn't have as many extras. Just has start it, uh, start the rescue DN for boast mode. I think that'll just show you more output when it's booting up. But uh, I tried a whole bunch of the newer, I hadn't done any virus scan in a year or two because I hadn't been running my Windows systems. It's off to one side over there, but it's right in the center of my big monitor. Some of them won't show up on a dual monitor system at all. But uh, <clears throat> all these have, 
and uh, anyway, these three I used to use Ke uh, Kepper's guy or Kapersky. I always call it. I've always called it Kepper's guy because I, I didn't ever hear it said or by anyone or see it written with any accent marks or anything. And so I looked like Kepper's guy to me. And <laughs> I even I even read about it and found out it was made in Russia, but it still didn't hit me. <laughs> Kapersky. So anyway. <coughs> Some people, when I finally heard people saying it, you know, like on TV or whatever, some they didn't quite say it right either. So I think Kepper's guy sounds better. Makes you think of it, uh, you know, it's something good. It's fixing your. Okay, so it's already scanning. I always forget this one does that. It boots up, and I think it updates and starts scanning. And that's it. And that uh, this right here, tip of the day. And I think, oh, that's telling you how to set it up, you know, and here I was talking, so. Okay, you should update before each scan, but not more than once an hour. Okay. Well, oh, you know what? If I would have hurried up, I would have got my chance to update. So, if I would have been talking, I probably would have caught it in time. So, what am I going to do to update? Let's see. Optiboot. There's my drive. It more automatically mounted my drives. Almost, well, they all have to do that. But there are some that are for Windows systems only. They won't mount. Uh, actually, I don't think this one did mount uh, my, my Linux file system. Some will and some won't. Uh, where's the update part? I want if it updated by itself, I won't have to do that. I don't see a link to update. It was probably up there, telling ask telling me to do it or asking me if I want to do it, but it was evidently counting down to start, and it did it really quick. Log viewer, let's see. Oh, it has the last time I used it on there. May 17th. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't know if it, it, it must be getting those all, it, it, they do that, they say, they say, they make a folder on your hard drive and make a quarantine folder and kind of, and, and some of their own system files and stuff. Okay, logging started. Saturday, 23rd of July, 2016. And, uh, media, exboot, NTFS. And, oh, it's, it's scanning my USB stick, too. Exboot is one of my drives. NTFS is my C drive. That's my FAT32, the Exboot. I named it that because I think Exboot was what I used to make it with or something, and... So I just let it name it that, and I thought, well, it's my boot drive, so cool. <coughs> I can repair my install or, or repair my Windows 7 from that, as long as it's not infected. And doesn't get broke during the cleaning. This is a pretty fast one, if I remember right. But I kind of hate to stop it, and I kind of hate to... kind of hate to let it keep going whenever I'm not sure that it updated the definitions. I clicked on, that's the icon to start it with, okay. It's only been three minutes, I'm going to hit cancel. Done. Okay, there we go. I see it should start in the, up, it should start in the update screen. Error, update server address is not connected. Stop due to errors. Close. That's weird. I'm going to exit it all together. Open it back up. Close that. Update. Oh, it says trial. I forgot it was like that, but it's always been working. Maybe it uh, timed out. Huh. Yeah, it was kind of weird how it acted. It said, uh, it's, it, 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 I've never seen that on a Linux rescue uh, disk before, system. It's 
settings. Update server. Well, this is the update server right there. So I don't know. Won't be worth messing with if it don't update. Get us. Oh, there's the key right there that came with it. But uh, I th what I was looking at is like, okay. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well, I looked at my logs and saw when I used it. May, May, June, July. Okay, so maybe that, maybe it was within that. I've got them again. Oops, close. Logs. 17, 22. Well, of course, I used it on other systems. I used it on that AS Rock. I call it AS Rock because that's the motherboard I have in it. Uh, the other one. Maybe I used it all within 30 days. Get a free license key. Brings you to their website, I'm sure. Okay. I, I didn't use uh, the reason I didn't put Kepersky on this boot stick is because it wouldn't boot on my uh, AS Rock or something. I think it'll boot on this. I think. I don't want to get into all that right now. I think I'll just get out of it. This one has XFCE desktop. I can tell by the way that that little thing right there. Departed, Fox at Reader, Firefox web browser. Got a few things in there, not a lot. They don't, they don't put a whole lot in them. Okay, so I want to shut it down. Oh, arm gets, you know, foams aren't very big and heavy, but man, when you sit, sit there holding something for that long. Well, I've done it several times this evening, you know. So, okay, I'll get that out of there. Put it over here. I don't want it hitting the floor in a minute. Where's my, I'm actually using the phone to see what I'm doing, but it doesn't work too well. Okay, now. Go back into Windows 7. See, there's my uh, where I could go down. Whoops, I was going to show. Didn't hit it in time. Anyway, if I had went down to that second one, that I could have rescued it or, or or installed or whatever. That's not your normal setup. I I set that up that way. I didn't do that on my uh, AS Rock. I kind of wish I had. Well, I didn't really need to because I've got a DVD. This the reason I did that on this one because the DVD drive doesn't work well, and I couldn't do it from the DVD. Okay. <clears throat> Type the old password. Now, mm. switch hands for. For the old steady cam here, this thing has a pretty good stabilizer, I would say, considering how hard it is to hold still. The phone, I mean. Let's see if anything got broke. It's booting up so far. Looks like it's gonna be all right. Yeah, it's all right. Now, if we had got rid of whatever's making it hog 50% of the CPU. Wouldn't that be good? If it's not, I'm going to quit messing with it for the night. Sure. All I wanted to do is use OBS Studio to make a quick little recording. Just a test recording. Just messing around with the... With it all. And, uh... I have to have my right hand to do the mouse, so... I have to go back to the hard way with the phone. What was I gonna do? Oh yeah, well it ain't quite done booting up. It's still got the circle on the on the. I like sometimes I do that because I know when all that's there, and everything is down there, it's done. So.
should be a little more. Avast is up. Google Photos, VNC server and viewer. Tiger VNC. And uh, I don't take it out anywhere, so I wouldn't leave, have that VNC server on there if I took that laptop to a public place, that's for sure. And I have that Windows 10. I don't want Windows 10 app on there, man. Now I was having trouble with all that. I, put, I found that uh, stops all that crap from getting installed and filling up, filling up your drive and messing there, nagging you to death. Okay, is that everything? I th there might be some more. I'm gonna. S I, I should. Well, it's still working. If the mouse is working, it's not going to do you much good to start opening up applications because it just sit there waiting. Now, resource monitor. Oh yeah, gotta have that root. I mean that admin password. Still be back. Yeah, it's in CPU mode. No, it's on overview. Put it on CPU. Okay, so far so good, but it took it a while to do that last time too. Just a few things bouncing around. See, at first, th this way it did last time. First, nothing was real bad. It wasn't using too much. I'll go back on overview just to see what the difference is. Yeah, with it just sitting there running nothing but the monitor, the performance monitor, system monitor. Uh oh. Same exact one. Well, it's actually might be two, two different ones from SBC host execute. That says logical system networks. It quit doing it though. That's what it did last time, and then it turned out to be another one that has a shorter name to it. I think it's that one. Oh, I can't. He, I can't get it. Keeps bouncing back and forth. That's the one. It's net net services net SVCS. Let's see if it's no, it's not doing it though right now. So. You can see on the graphs that you know there's certainly some peggers on there bringing everything up. I mean, not everything, but it's pe it's it's pegging the top, and then but it's going up and down, up and down. Okay, now it's beginning to do it. SVC SVC host. .exe net ser services and it's right there again right there. not good and I don't know what to do I guess ever since that well, a few months or so ago I had it on, I hadn't had it on in a long time, and I decided to copy a bunch of these. Uh, I used that uh, Windows file copying application, easy, called Easy something, to copy to the, actually, my uh, Lenovo i5 also has uh, Win 7 on it, and I hadn't even set it up. I installed it and left it. Hadn't used it, and I've had, I've had the machine for eight months or something now. Anyway, I thought, well, I want to get some apps on there and stuff. And so I thought, I'll try that when e e Windows 7 Easy File Transfer, something it's called something like that. And uh, I, I had tried it, something the one they had back in Windows XP several times, and it it just 
it wasn't much good. It just got a lot of errors and copy program. It copied programs, but it wouldn't make them run. They didn't copy everything it needed to make them run. It didn't install them. It just copied them over to the program directory, and that's kind of pretty much what this did. And as during the middle of it, after it had been going quite a while, it uh, a vast on the laptop popped up and said, "Oh, threat stopped." And I'm like, "Oh crap! I didn't know there was a, there's not supposed to be a threat on here." I thought before I started, "Well, that thing's clean. I don't got nothing to worry about." But I did think about it, and um, so then I thought, "Well, great! I screwed up the new system." And so I went ahead and scanned them all. Uh, that's when I set up all these USB sticks, scanned them, each one at least three times. Well, I think I scanned them with Clam AV. See, I can scan them, and I'll probably do that. I think I'll do it now. Since I'm showing and telling here, I'm going to, well, let's just leave it like this. I'm going to reboot. And, um,. I don't know if it'll come up on that screen or not, the boot screen. Let's see, yeah, I don't have a USB stick in there. Okay. So, that's a lot of times the first thing I'll do is I will scan for my Linux system because I can mount my NTFS drives and all my Windows drives inside of Linux, scan them from Linux uh, because uh, it's, bas it's the same thing as, you know, is doing it. Whoops. Just leave it alone. If I'd left it alone, it would just boot it. Do it from Linux. That's basically what you're doing. Same basic thing you're doing off the live sticks, but uh, uh, the Linux is actually installed uh, on these, this one. This is the system I use all the time.